The effect that the docuseries Welcome to Wrexham has had on Wrexham Football Club has been absolutely astonishing and in today's video we're going to be breaking down every good impact that the documentary has had on the club. But before we get into today's video, if you're new watching this video and if you're looking for all the best Wrexham FC content on YouTube, this is the place to be. Make sure to get down there, click the red subscribe button, we're on the road to 20,000 subscribers. Make sure to go and watch my matchday vlog from our win over Grimsby Town at the weekend, our best performance of the season so far and also look at what sweatshirt I have got on today. I promoted it in the last video and I'm going to promote it again because I genuinely believe it's one of the best products that's not affiliated with the club so I mean if you want to pick yours up for just £29 click the link in the description. This design was actually made by myself and we've collaborated with the 1412 to make this wonderful sweatshirt. It's comfy hence why I'm wearing it in this video. It's cold outside and I've got this on. It's a perfect base layer for the winter and make sure to get yours by clicking the first link in the description down below. Enough self-promoting now, let's get talking about Welcome to Wrexham because obviously we all know Welcome to Wrexham Season 2 has just come out and I feel like it's right to talk about the incredible impact it has had on Wrexham AFC. So like I said, we all know Season 2 has come out and so far it seems to have gone down an absolute treat amongst Wrexham fans and sports lovers and obviously we all know the impact that the Season 1 documentary did have on not only Wrexham AFC but the brand, the name of Wrexham, the community of Wrexham. So obviously it is reported that the documentary did make £321,000 per hour of content on the first season which is absolutely ridiculous you know obviously in season one we did two 30 minute episodes every week so that's £321,000 for two episodes of the Welcome to Wrexham documentary which is obviously really good money obviously to get some of it will have gone to the club in Ryan and Rob's pocket and obviously if it has gone in their pocket I can imagine they've only just given it back to Wrexham Football Club and obviously some have obviously gone to pay the wages of the film producers of Welcome to Wrexham so yeah the club did actually make £321,000 per hour of content on season one so immediately the financial side of things is crazy and the impact that it's had financially on the club is absolutely ridiculous. I think the next factor as well that has shocked a lot of people throughout the journey of the release of Welcome to Wrexham is the club's social media following has absolutely just skyrocketed ever since the documentary has come out. I've actually got some stats here now. The club's social media, all accounts, I think they've got five accounts across all social medias, went from 764,000. This was the day before the first episode of Welcome to Wrexham last summer and now it's gone on the current day to 3,333,000. That is a 336% increase in 385 days which is absolutely ridiculous. I would love to know the stats of every other football club's following gained on social media because I'm sure Wrexham's has to be at least in the top 20 in England. I would even go higher than that, maybe top 10 in the English leagues of football because I think it's fair to say a lot of people did enjoy this documentary and it just goes to show a 336% increase shows that there is a lot of people out there that are interested in seeing Wrexham's fairy tale journey. There'll be a few fans of other clubs that will not like the fact that I've just said that. But if you know the past and the history of Wrexham AFC in the past 10 years or so, you'll know that this is an incredible story and it fits the bill perfectly with Wrexham Football Club, obviously when we've nearly gone bust on two different occasions, the incredible, incredible fans of Wrexham Football Club saved the club twice from going into liquidation and we were that close from not having a club to now seeing where we are, seeing the owners that we've got, seeing that the community is back together stronger than ever and we are a football club that are on the rise and although it might hurt other football fans of different clubs to see the journey we've got, I think it's hard to say that this isn't a journey that anyone would not turn their noses up at if it was their club. And obviously on the topic of social media following, obviously since the documentaries come out, Wrexham have gained a huge, huge international fan base. A prime example of this is when we did our US tour, obviously in the United States of America, when we did obviously play Manchester United, Chelsea, Philadelphia Union, LA Galaxy. It just showed that the documentaries had a huge impact on the club's worldwide following. Our worldwide Reds following is absolutely incredible. Like I said, we saw in this state we saw the thousands of people that turned up to watch Wrexham and we saw the TST tournament as well I wasn't really too sure what to expect but the turnout just to see previous club legends and I wouldn't even go as far as saying club legends just previous players of the club the demand at the minute to see Wrexham AFC play 
just cannot fathom how incredibly crazy it is and we'll get on to the attendances in a minute but like I said the worldwide fan base that Wrexham AFC have at the minute is absolutely ridiculous and it's not only down to Robin Ryan but it's obviously down to the documentary I can imagine it's gone down a treat like other football documentaries Spurs is all or nothing we've obviously seen Sunderland till I die they've obviously gained new people new eyeballs on the club but I think Wrexham is a bit more unique because we were in the fifth tier of English football when the this documentary did come out compared to the likes of Spurs who were a worldwide name. Sunderland, they were, I think they were in the Championship or League One at the time of the release of theirs. So a lot of people already knew, but a lot of people in America had never even heard of the word Rex and probably didn't even know that the word existed. And yeah, obviously Rob and Ryan knew a documentary would be the best way to grow Rex and AFC. We saw when they first took over from February 2021 to when the documentary was released in August 2022. The club obviously had a good renowned name already in the English leagues but with the takeover of these two it grew the name even more and I think there were eyeballs on the club already obviously we saw the attendances nearly doubled from the last season they did play with fans and then I think the documentary was obviously the icing on the cake it grew the club from here to here within the space of a couple of months and it was incredible to see they obviously have a history in filmmaking so they know the ins and outs they know how to produce the right documentary and i feel like they've got the right team behind it to produce it they've obviously got great camera work they've intertwined the fans in it they've got behind the scenes they've got the club action and i think the storyline how they tell it well definitely in season one as well how they went from the first episode to the last episode it left us on a cliffhanger and i definitely think they did a top tier job on how they produce the documentary. If you like your nerdy stats, you'll like this one. Now, Google Trends did actually release that Wrexham AFC became one of the most searched terms on Google in the US, surpassing the nation's league of football, the MLS. Obviously, Wrexham had more Google searches in the year than any MLS team, which I think is absolutely ridiculous and considering that that's in the USA, the home country of the likes of, obviously, I'm sure Inter Miami will have overtaken them now, but Inter Miami, LA Galaxy, you've got Atlanta United, Philadelphia Union, all those big teams out there. Wrexham surpassed all of those in Google searches. Now, did I ever think those words would come out of my mouth that Wrexham would be the most searched football team in the USA across the whole 12 months? Never, never, ever, ever did I think I would be saying those words. But I mean, here we are, we're sat in the situation where Wrexham obviously are a massive club in the US. We've got hundreds and thousands of followers and I would definitely say a majority of those are from the United States of America. The thousands of people that stream in every week to watch the Wrexham games on iFollow, they did it last year for National League TV. I feel like we've got a really good community together with Wrexham AFC, whether it be fans that are obviously local to Wrexham AFC or whether it be fans that are living in the States. I feel like we're all one community. The club's upward trajectory is absolutely incredible at the minute. We're a club on the rise and obviously I think it was incredible the fact we were able to do that tour in the US say it gave the US fans who probably will never get to see us play at the race course ground obviously with the ticket demand at the minute but you know it would be incredible to see as many of those come over to the Wales and watch Rex AFC play but like I said it was a great opportunity for them to go and watch the Reds in action the one I want to point out is the Chelsea game our first game of pre-season tour I think it was like a sellout 50,000 stadium and if I'm being honest I would say over half of those were wearing Wrexham shirts or were there following Wrexham AFC I can't stress enough how thankful I am to Rob and Ryan obviously the documentary team who have put together a wonderful documentary that's gained thousands of new followers to Wrexham AFC it's not only had an impact on the club we've supported for years but obviously my YouTube channel we've gained an incredible fan base here on YouTube and also the documentary did a really good thing of highlighting local businesses obviously saw the turf ac engineering and obviously the positives of wrexham afc which will obviously attract people to come and visit wrexham think what you will of wrexham it's questionable place but i mean if you're there for just the football club and you're only going there to see wrexham afc related stuff i mean you've got the turf incredible place you can go in there have a drink meet wayne the owner see the famous burger van outside the turf have a look at the ground on the outside i don't think you're allowed in at the minute to have a look around the ground unless it's a designated stadium tour but if you're there on your own and it's a quiet day i'm sure they'll let you have a peep through onto the pitch i mean and just go into the club shop buy some merch it is a great day out if you are looking to go for Wrexham AFC related stuff the area of Wrexham you can have your thoughts on that but if you're going to Wrexham just for the football club 
it's a brilliant place to be. And obviously the turf has become an incredibly worldwide sensation, I would say, um, amongst people that have traveling from the US, from Canada, from Australia, they are there. And their first place to go is the turf for a drink. It's great to see the turf, it's been there for absolutely ages. And to see that it's got the growth and it's got the recognition it deserves is absolutely incredible. I think it's only right to talk about probably the main factor that, that not only the Welcome to Wrexham documentary, but the takeover has had on Wrexham is the surge in attendances now. It's put the club on an even larger larger scale than it already was the documentary because our first full season under Robin Ryan the 21-22 season when our average attendance was 8,834 but post documentary the season after our average attendance was 9,954 and to the following season this current season to date it is 10,209 now you could say it's obviously increased that extra bit more because obviously we opened the higher tier of where the away end was but in the 21-22 season we had the top and the bottom four away fans and take a couple of teams for example the smaller teams I think they only sold about 30-40 tickets and then the club made the decision to put more home fans in that higher tier so that's obviously one of the impacts on the attendance increase but like I said, pre-takeover, we were averaging about 4,000. Obviously, fans can have a go saying, where were you when you were shit? But our attendances have consistently been good, bar maybe a couple of seasons here and there. But for as long as I remember, we've got a good fan base. We've got a good following. We've got a good loyal following. To see our average attendance of 10,209 this season, I mean, it brings a tear to my eye. It's absolutely incredible. If we rewind about four years ago, 2019-20, I was sat in the Mold Road. I could picture exactly where we were looking out on when certain situations happened say for example that horrific older shot loss at home and obviously our final game before COVID-19 we were sat in the Rex went stand behind the goal just from where we are sat now with our season tickets but I remember that game and thinking can it get any worse and it could got worse we could have been relegated that season but we survived by one point you think right if we wouldn't have picked up that point if we'd have lost against Eastleigh none of this could have happened we probably wouldn't have had the takeover there'd be no documentary and if I'm being honest we probably would have still been in the National League North now the higher demand for tickets home and away will obviously increase the club's revenue and the demand for shirts as well that's another thing that has been absolutely crazy the demand for the home away third shirt sold out 24,000 shirts last season which proved to be too little they went in an absolute flash and this is no disrespect to Wrexham but the home shirt last year wasn't incredible. I'd say it's a mediocre shirt. If I saw maybe the likes of, I don't know, Crawley Town, Bradford City, if they were rocking that shirt, I would think it's a bang average mediocre shirt. It just shows the demand that people are going to and the lengths that people are going to to support Wrexham OC. The fact that we've sold out 24,000 shirts is absolutely incredible. And that obviously includes the away and the third shirt. The third shirt was an th absolute thing of beauty and I'm sure that went down an absolute treat but they've stocked up on 35,000 shirts this current season and I would like to say 99% bar maybe 100, 200 in the club shop have sold out which is absolutely incredible. It's just great isn't it? I'm running out of words to say about how I feel about this whole situation but in one word incredible let me know in the comment section down below have you been able to snag yourself a rex mercy shirt for this season and let me know which one you have got and let's get talking next about the impact of welcome to Wrexham on our us tour now i've briefly said about it before but i mean this tour probably wouldn't have happened without the welcome to Wrexham documentary we saw the amount of people that have shown love to rex mercy from the documentary that are from USA. The demand for tickets across the board for our US tour was absolutely crazy and to think the prices of them, they weren't cheap, they were not cheap at all. To think that thousands of people did pay that incredible price for the tickets just shows how much they love Wrexham FC, how much they want to be involved in the football club of Wrexham FC and this is all thanks to one documentary and for obviously all our new worldwide fans they've experienced all the good times so far but I'm sure they'll have seen on the documentary and read into the club's past that it's not been easy going being a Wrexham fan the past 10 20 years or so so yeah it can only get better from here it's only getting better from here and we're so grateful that we're in this situation we're in I'm sure it blew many people's minds obviously Wrexham fans like myself who've been following and supporting the club for over 10 years to see the welcome the Wrexham players got in America and see the support that they had out in America was absolutely ridiculous.
And obviously with the reception that the Season 1 of Welcome to Wrexham got, it's obviously allowed the pathway to create Season 2. The demand for Season 2 was absolutely ridiculous. People on social media after Season 1 ended saying we need a Season 2 and we finally got it. It's been released obviously last week and the next episode is coming out tomorrow on Tuesday. So it's going to be a good season. We all know how it ends. If there's anyone that doesn't know, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm sure everyone knows by now. And I think this one will go down a hit as much as the first one. I think more people tune into the second one, which I think is obviously great for the club. It brings the exposure back onto Wrexham AFC. It increases the club's national profile and obviously worldwide profile. It's good because who doesn't love a documentary, especially who doesn't love a football documentary? And there's people watching this that probably have never shown an interest in football in the past that have been drawn onto this. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney are two main reasons why people have obviously watched the documentary but people have fell in love with Rex and they've seen the story we've got they've seen the incredible people that are in amongst the clubs season two is one to look out for and one to enjoy I think another reason as well why it did so well obviously you know the reasons why Rob and Ryan obviously the aim for promotion to the football league the incredible agonizing stay that we've had I think it was 15 years in the end that we spent away out of the football league but I think one of the other reasons why, like I said, is the way that we can see the ins and outs, etc. And obviously Rob Ryan's conference calls with Sean Harvey, Humphrey Carr. So yeah, it's good. We get to see in the club, we get to know the players. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people did get hooked onto this documentary because you feel as if you are like part of the club. You feel as if you know everything as much as like the chairman do because obviously they did a really good job of showing the ins and outs of Wrexham Football Club and what goes on. And as we did see last year, it wasn't all easy sailing. We obviously saw the pitch out to get dug up. We've seen on season one about the levelling up funding for the cops. So there's going to be bad and there's going to be goods and that is absolutely why we love this documentary of course as well you've got the sponsors but i feel like that's more towards like the pull of ryan reynolds and rob McElhenney. obviously they have contacts and they've been able to obviously get those big sponsors in but i'd like to think there's a couple that have been attracted by the documentary they've seen how well the club has done and how well the profile has risen from the documentary and they feel like they need to get on board which obviously increases the club's revenue and helps the club build financially and yeah that is it that is the incredible effect of welcome to Wrexham as a Wrexham fan myself obviously you may think I'm young but I've been watching the club since I was six or seven years old over 10 years now I've seen the goods I've seen the bads I've seen the great starts of the season we've had and I've seen my fair share of horrific results so it's finally good to see the club is on the up it's incredible being a Wrexham fan at the minute we are loving life and touch wood nothing bad happens but the club seems to be in great hands with Rob and Ryan, the people that are running the club. And yeah, it can only get better from here. And what a time to be a Wrexham fan. Up the town, and I hope you enjoyed.